Hey everybody, today is Saturday, September 2nd, and I thought I would go ahead and film my um, nutritional guidelines book for everybody that is interested. I will be going over everything that I am allowed to eat and drink two weeks before surgery as well as after surgery. So if you guys are interested in seeing what I will be following as far as a pre and post-op diet, then just keep watching. All right, so this is my book, Carl Bariatrics Program, Nutritional Guidelines for Gastric Bypass and Sleeve Gastrectomy, Nutritional Guidance for a Life Transformed by Carl, which is the hospital that I will be going through. So this is the booklet that they gave me, just a little pamphlet, um, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So I am going to go ahead and just go straight to the, um, well, I guess I'll start from the beginning. And this just kind of shows how the laparoscopic um, gastrectomy, um, gastric bypass and sleeve gastrectomy work. So it goes over both of them. Um, general nutrition guidelines after surgery. So we'll go ahead and start from the beginning. I'm sorry, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to read this, but I'm going to read it out to you. Here we go. Eat at least four to six mini meals per day. Small frequent meals are necessary in order to meet your nutritional needs. Not eating frequent enough can result in minimal or slower weight loss. Limit the amount of food at each meal to a third cup or two to three ounces. Do not eat sweets or drink sweetened beverages unless they are sweetened with a sugar substitute. Do not chew a sweetened gum. Sugar-free chewing gum and sugar-free mints are okay. Try using spices and seasonings to season food. Herbs, spices, vinegar, salsa, mustard, and other condiments low in fat and sugar can be used. Try Molly McButter, Butter Buds, or I can't believe it's not butter to replace butter or margarine. Avoid bacon grease and Crisco during cooking. Who avoids bacon grease? Ha! Huh. Um, any current prescribed medications may be adjusted by your physician after surgery. Some people experience a bad taste in their mouth during the first month after surgery. This is completely normal and is due to rapid weight loss and lower food intake. This should go away after a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, then it goes on to just um, basically tell you how important protein is. I think we all know that um, as of right now, and so I'm not going to read that in depth. Come on. All right. So minimum protein requirements for women, 50 to 60 grams of protein a day It is essential to incorporate protein into your meal plan. It is needed for healthy cells to properly heal your wounds after surgery, maintain muscle mass, fight infections and prevent potential hair loss. Um, this goes through all of the protein sources that you can find. So I'm going to leave this right here for you guys for just a second. Please feel free to screen grab that if you would like. I am not going to go down each individual one. So save that if you would like and then we're going to go ahead and move on um let me see here what does this say oh this is just some protein shake guidelines again if you want to screen grab it please do it goes over protein shake uh the amount of protein carbs fat and calories per protein shake so if you want to screen grab it please feel free but i'm not going to go over each individual one okay moving on Okay, fluid. So this is what my doctor's office tells me. And again, I know everybody is different. Drink slowly. Do not use a straw. Drinking through a straw can overfill your pouch with liquid or air. Avoid liquids during meals and a half hour, half hour after meals to avoid dumping syndrome or flushing of vital nutrients from the stomach pouch. Um, try to reach a minimum fluid intake of 64 ounces per day. This will be difficult, especially the first four to six weeks. Sip liquid slowly. Drink about a half a cup for every half hour during appropriate times. Make liquids count. Choose high-protein liquid supplements while on the full liquid and puree diet. Um, do to do Try sugar-free popsicles. Other liquids you may drink include Crystal Light, sugar-free Kool-Aid, unsweet tea and coffee, Propel Zero, Powerade Zero, and Vitamin Water Zero. Try not to consume any more than two 8-ounce cups of coffee or tea per day. That's not a problem for me. I don't like either. Um, you must be caffeine-free for at least eight weeks after surgery in order to prevent dehydration. That is very, very, very important. Avoid carbonated beverages at all times, even diet carbonated beverages or sparkling waters. They are a no-no. 
Avoid alcoholic beverages, including beer, wine, and liquor. Alcohol affects your liver very quickly after surgery. This can cause serious liver damage in some patients. Additionally, alcoholic beverages can cause weight gain and result in poor nutrition since they're high in calories and low in nutrients. I think that we have all kind of known that. Um, I love that they put this in here though, signs of dehydration. So one of more of the following, one or, or more of the following may indicate dehydration. Dry mouth, sunken eyes, frequent vomiting, cracked lips, dark urine, or you're easily confused. That is very, very, very important to look out for after surgery to make sure you are not um, dehydrated. Foods to avoid. Do not eat foods with added sugars. Foods that list any of the following sugars as the first three ingredients should be avoided. These are added sugars. Watch for the sugars. Again, take a screen grab if you want. It's mainly cane juice, short, uh, brown sugar, fructose, fruit sugar, dextrose, corn syrup, da 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 da. Okay, keep going. Dumping syndrome. Now, it does say here gastric bypass patients mostly. However, I am not naive. I know dumping syndrome can occur in our sleeve gastrectomy patients as well. It is severe diarrhea, nausea, lightheadedness, stomach cramps. Dumping syndrome is caused by eating and drinking at the same time and by eating sweets or foods high in sugar. I know it also is not just that. Sometimes if you eat too much or you just eat something your stomach does not agree with, you can experience dumping syndrome. Please screen grab this because I am not going to go over everything. However, I did want to post... Um, what do not drink the following beverages because there's a lot of people that I've seen that are allowed to drink these which is fine because that follows your guidelines I am not allowed to drink any of these so soft drinks ensure or boost vitamin water Hawaiian punch regular fruit drinks Gatorade or G2 um, there's a lot of people that can drink G2 I am not allowed to sunny delight kool-aid uh, sweet and seltzer water, ultra slim fast, Tampico, or lemonade. Those are big no-nos on my diet plan. Um, vitamin supplements. So, let's see. Multivitamin. I already take a multivitamin. Um, I'm already taking calcium and vitamin D. And my multivitamin also has iron in it. I do have a vitamin B12 um, I have not taken it, but I do have one, so if, if I need to, I can have one. Um, my vitamin D level, again, I've got a calcium chew that includes vitamin D, so I'm not taking a separate vitamin D. Okay. Let's see here. Section two, the stages of meal planning before and after surgery. There are five stages of meal planning. As you begin, you are training your stomach pouch to tolerate different foods, gradually moving from liquids to solids. So, stage one, pre-op diet lasts for two weeks before my surgery date. Stage two, full liquids, approximately two weeks. That starts as soon as I get home from the hospital. Stage three is the, bu the pureed or blended. It lasts pro approximately two weeks. Starting three weeks after surgery, stay on until you see a dietitian. Um, stage four, soft foods, approximately two weeks. I start that after seeing a dietitian. And stage five, regular foods for indefinitely, um, and that will be about seven weeks after surgery. It's very important to follow the stages above and follow up with your physician during the advancement of these diet stages. Okay, we're going to move on. So this is going to be the pre-surgery diet for weight loss surgery patients. Now this first is for men. If you are interested in what it does say for men, please let me know and I'd be more than happy to go over it. Um, however, I am a woman and the majority of the followers I have are women as well. So I'm going to go straight to the pre-surgery meals for women. The goal is to hit 800 calories per day and 50 to 60 grams of protein per day. I do know that within the first month, especially, this is going to be difficult. Um, but this is what um, they have given me as example meal plans. So, there's three different ones I'm going to go over with you. Two, no sugar added carnation instant breakfast shakes mixed with skin milk or 1% milk. Now, I was also told that I could use a protein shake of my choice. So I can use the Premier Protein. I can have two of those per day. Um, I can have one six ounce serving of light or non-fat yogurt, um, which I have the Danon Greek um, 80 calorie yogurts that I can use right here. 
one eight ounce serving of skim or one percent milk so i can have a cup of milk a quarter cup of low-fat cottage cheese three quarter cup of plain frozen or fresh vegetables and three medium pieces of fruit so to go over this again basically saying for day one what i will be having is two protein shakes one yogurt one glass of milk a fourth cup of cottage cheese three-fourths cup of vegetables, and three medium pieces of fruit. That is just day one. Um, it does say that I will intake 794 to 885 calories and 48 to 53 grams of protein. So, um, daily meal plan number two. Two Atkins Advantage shakes. Again, I am allowed to have my Premier Protein shakes as a substitute. So, two shakes, one 8-ounce cup of skim milk, half a cup of cottage cheese, two cups of plain, fresh, or frozen vegetables, and two medium pieces of fruit. That's going to be between 809 and 880 calories and about 56 grams of protein. So that is meal plan number one. Meal plan number two, there is a third meal plan right here as well. Again, two no sugar added carnation instant breakfast shakes or two premier protein shakes as I will be having. Two Two and a half eight ounce cups of skim milk, two cups of fresh or frozen vegetables, and three medium pieces of fruit. For the day, that will be 790 to 920 calories and 52 grams of protein. Um, so then it goes on to give me sample diet menus. So again, this is still pre surgery. And so breakfast one shake and one medium piece of fruit. Uh, morning snack is going to be your cup of milk. And then your serving of non-fat or light yogurt. Lunch is a fourth cup of steamed or raw veggies and a fourth cup of low-fat cottage cheese. Afternoon snack is one medium piece of fruit. Dinner will be another uh, protein shake and a fourth cup of steamed or raw vegetables. And a later night snack just after dinner is going to be one fourth cup of raw or cooked vegetables and one medium piece of fruit. So, again, screen grab this if you're interested. It does go over women's and men's. So, if you're a man, you can screen grab this and it will give you an example. Um, it gives two more examples. Obviously, they're going to follow meal plan one, meal plan two, meal plan three. So, this now is going to be the breakfast menu. One Atkins or Premier Protein Shake and one medium piece of fruit for breakfast. A morning snack, a fourth cup of cottage cheese and a half cup of vegetables. Lunch is a half cup of raw or steamed veggies and a four ounce cup of milk. Afternoon snack, one half cup of vegetables and another four ounce cup of milk. Dinner will be another premier protein shake and then a half a cup of raw or steamed vegetables. After dinner snack is going to be one medium piece of fruit and a fourth cup of cottage cheese. Let's move on to the third meal plan. Again, this is the third and final example they give us. For breakfast, one protein shake and one medium piece of fruit morning snack is going to be one four ounce cup of milk and a half ounce cup of vegetables sorry half cup of vegetables lunch is a half cup of vegetables and one medium piece of fruit uh, afternoon snack four ounce cup of milk and one medium piece of fruit dinner is another premier protein shake and a half cup of vegetables after dinner snack is going to be a four ounce cup of skim milk and a half cup of vegetables. So there we are with our three examples of what I can eat on this two week pre-op diet. Um, I will probably be interchanging all three of them. Um, they did say if you start one meal plan for the day, just finish that whole meal plan that day. And then you can do the next meal plan for the next day if you're interested. Go ahead and move on here. This is going to go through the stage one full liquids. This stage begins the day you're discharged from the hospital after surgery and continues for the next two weeks. Foods that are liquid at room temperature are allowed. The full liquid should be free of lumps and pieces of food. So, while on the full liquid diet, no carbonated or caffeinated beverages. Choose liquids, liquids that are sugar-free. Consume two to three protein shakes per day. Choose a protein supplement with at least 12 grams of protein per serving and less than 15 grams of carbohydrates per serving. Do not gulp fluids or use straws. So, this list now goes through the acceptable full liquids. Malt meal, cream of wheat, cream of rice, 
grits, fat-free strained cream-based soups, so no lumps, skim or 1% milk, lactose-free milk like Lactaid, Dairy Ease, plain soy milk, um, almond milk, however, there's no protein in almond milk, so you want to add something to it if you use that. Sugar-free pudding, no sugar added carnation instant breakfast, uh, sugar-free popsicles, decaf coffee, decaf tea. Again, there is a restriction, no more than 16 ounces a day on those. Light or fat-free yogurt, no chunks, nuts, seeds, granola, all that stuff. Sugar-free jello, sugar-free and calorie-free liquids. During the full liquid diet, be sure to review the general guidelines for fluids, which is, again, 64 ounces of fluids. So, we are going to now look at a sample, a sample full liquid menu for women. So, this is going to be um, what we're going to have in a day. So, menu number one, breakfast, one and a half ounces of light yogurt half ounce of cream of wheat, and your multivitamin. Mid-morning is a going to be a protein shake of choice, um, and then my calcium citrate and B12, if I, if I decide to take the B12. Again, it says gastric bypass patients, bleh, gastric bypass patients only, um, but I do have a calcium uh, citrate to take. Um, lunch, two ounces of fat-free cream soup diluted with skim milk. Mid-afternoon snack, another protein shake. Dinner, one ounce of fat-free cream soup with one tablespoon unflavored protein powder. One ounce of yogurt and another multivitamin. Evening snack is another protein shake of choice. So that is just one like sample day after surgery. So this is going to be my two week full liquid post surgery diet. Menu number two um, just gives you more options. So one fourth cup of fat free Greek yogurt and your multivitamin. Mid morning snack. I'm sorry if you can't read this. Uh, one protein shake. So eight to 11 ounces. Lunch is going to be one fourth cup of light or fat free yogurt and my calcium citrate. Afternoon snack, another 8 to 11 ounce protein shake of choice. Dinner, 1 fourth cup fat-free cream-based soup with 1 tablespoon of unflavored protein powder. And evening snack, another protein shake. So, screen grab this if you want it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the best, um, but it's just a full day of examples, you know, of what you would eat all day on the liquid diet. Okay, then my booklet goes right into the stage two for pureed blended foods. Your stomach pouch may take up to eight weeks to heal. This diet consists of foods pureed to the consistency of baby food or pudding. Yay. Remember, aim for a minimum of 64 ounces of fluids per day. Avoid drinking with meals and wait at least 30 minutes before and after meals. Um... Okay, always eat protein first. Take 20 to 25 minutes to consume meals. High protein foods include lean beef, pork, fish, skinless chicken or turkey. All of them need to be ground, blenderized, or baby food. Low fat cheese, light or fat free yogurt, and low fat cottage cheese or ricotta cheese. So, does give me instructions for pureed foods. Cut foods into very small pieces about the size of a nickel. Place food into a blender or a food processor until ground or pulverized. Add enough liquid to cover the blades, either broth or skim or 1% milk. Blend until smooth or ground. Uh, I have to be completely honest, I am probably not going to be doing this. Um, I will probably stick with something that I don't need to ground into some nasty paste. Um, but that's it. Uh, limit portions to one fourth to one third of a cup. Avoid baby foods that are complete dinners, so the ones that have the mixed vegetables and desserts you do not want to use. Okay, um, it does go through a full list um, of recommendations for your pureed diet. So it goes through um, beverages, and that means water, skim or 1% milk, buttermilk, no sugar added instant breakfast shakes, Protein shakes, Kool-Aid, Crystallite, Propel Zero, Powerade Zero, and Vitamin Water Zero. Soups and sauces. I don't know why it was, it's not going to focus on here. Hold on. 
the low-fat cream soup or chowders prepared with skim or 1% milk, vegetable or broth-based soups, low-fat cheese sauce, broth bouillon, and egg drop soup. Bread. Do you see this? It's not going to zoom. Under bread. None. Cereal. Cream of wheat, baby rice cereal, malta meal, and oatmeal. Eggs scrambled. You do not need to puree your scrambled eggs. Vegetables. Cooked and blended vegetables, strained vegetables, or baby food veggies. Fats. Up to four t tablespoons. Not tablespoons. Teaspoons per day. Low-fat or non-fat margarine. Low-fat or non-fat mayo. Low-fat or non-fat salad dressing or butter spray. So that just goes through um, some of the recommended lists. We do have some more on this side. It's going to begin with fruits. Fruit, fruits such as applesauce, apricots, ripe bananas, fruit cocktail, canned peaches or pears, and other fruits packed in water or their own juices. No fruits with syrup. Meats, fish, poultry, cheese, and meat alternatives. So ground beef, chicken, or turkey, a pureed pork chop, chicken, or lamb, all fish you do not need to puree. Melted low-fat cheese, low-fat or non-fat cottage cheese does not need to be pureed. And creamy low-fat peanut butter, tofu, and strained baby meats. Fun fact, I do not like peanut butter, so I won't be eating any of that. <laughs> potatoes and substitutes, mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, or sweet potatoes are all fine to eat. Other, vinegar, all herbs and spices in moderation, artificial sweeteners or su sugar substitutes. Salt, pepper, lemon juice, vanilla extract, mustard, and hot sauce. So that's pretty interesting, but that is going to be the recommended list of foods I can eat after, um, on my pureed diet. So then it does go through sample menus for the pureed diet. Again, this is the men's. So screen grab this if you're interested men, because I'm not going to go through this. Um, I just don't have the time. Okay. So we will go ahead and go through the um, sample pureed menu for women. I'm not going to go through all four menus. I mean, that just seems a bit repetitive. So as I go through, if you want to screen grab each row, you're more than welcome to. Um, let me see if I can get them to focus so you guys could actually read what they say before I go through these. Breakfast menu number one, an ounce of cottage cheese, one ounce of light or non-fat yogurt, and your multivitamin. Your morning snack is going to be a protein shake of choice and um, your calcium citrate vitamins if you are taking them. Lunch, one and a half ounces of ground or pureed chicken, seven and a half grams of protein in that. So that is huge, you guys. Um, half ounce of pureed green beans and then another vitamin if you are taking them, which between bypass and sleep patients, it's different. Afternoon snack is going to be a protein shake. Dinner is going to be another one and a half ounces of ground pork which again is seven and a half grams of protein, you guys. Read that right there between lunch and dinner is 15 grams of protein. So that's going to be added to your protein shakes. Like that's crazy, that's that's what you should be doing. Um, is this logical to do every day? Nope, sure isn't, uh, but that's the goal. So one and a half ounces of ground pork, half ounce of mashed potato and your Flintstone vitamin. Um, your after dinner snack is a protein shake of choice and a, another vitamin. So again, I'm not going to go through all four of these, but I will go through, uh, we'll do menu number three. Fourth cup of cooked oatmeal with skim or 1% milk and two ounces of banana for breakfast. A, um, now mid morning snack is going to be a protein shake of choice. Lunch is a fourth cup of light or non-fat yogurt and two ounces of soft canned fruit. Afternoon snack is one protein shake of choice. Dinner, two and a half ounce jar of baby food chicken with one ounce of chicken noodle soup. Um, after dinner snack, a protein shake, and again, all of your vitamins are included in these, so be sure to take your vitamins. Um, this just says... Uh, five weeks after surgery, the progression diet. So for the past four weeks, you have followed a diet that is liquid and or blended form. This is to help heal the staple line. Now five weeks out from surgery, you're ready to gradually add solid foods into your diet. It's important that you observe the reactions to various foods. This will determine the rate at which you move forward from ground and pureed foods to solid foods. 
the progression diet is divided into two phases, soft and regular foods. So they're giving you tips for adjusting to solid foods. Eat small amounts of food. Your stomach pouch is approximately the size of a small egg or size of a roll of dimes. Therefore, eating only one ounce of food over a 10 to 15 minute period. If you feel full, stop eating. Chew a food thoroughly. Chew food until it's almost liquid in your mouth to avoid sticking or vomiting. Eat slowly. Take small bites and chew thoroughly. Place foods on a small plate to make it appear like you eat more. Do not eat your meals if you are preoccupied with watching TV on the computer or phone to avoid overeating. Wait to drink fluids 30 minutes after a meal. I think that is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Here we go. Continue to include two milk servings, two starch servings, two vegetable servings, two fruit servings, three fat servings, and six meat servings. And then it goes through the little food pyramid for after weight loss surgery. So screenshot if you would like to keep that. Okay. Guys, I think we are about done here, to be honest. Um, I am not going to go through the soft and regular food phases right now. Um, maybe I will do that when I'm getting to the point of, you know, beginning the soft and regular food phase. But as of right now, I'm not going to do that because I'm just not there. And I don't think most of the people that I'm with right now are there. So it's going to be it. It does also go through exercise recommendations. Now, I'd be more than happy to go through this really quick with you guys. Um, it's imperative after surgery, work up to a goal exercise of 30 minutes at least five days a week. Remember the key to weight loss is using using more calories than you take in. So walking. Walking can be started before surgery and immediately when you return home from the hospital. This is beneficial in order to help um, to help against a blood clot information. Blood clot formation. Debris. Walking can be done all year round. When it's nice weather, walking and hiking can be done. Move indoors to a gym or a mall on cold, rainy, or humid days. Start by walking on a flat surface, and as you lose weight and gain better balance, start adding the incline. Alternate your walking routines to help exercise, to help keep exercise interesting and fun. I like that idea. Walk in safe, well-lit areas. You know that, girls. We ain't trying to die today. Uh, it does go over aerobic activity as well. Check with your doctor or surgeon before starting a strenuous exercise program. The best way to stick with a program is to find an exercise you enjoy. I think that is pretty self-explanatory. Um, swimming and water aerobics are good activities if you have joint pain or immobility. And some ways to increase activity are taking the stairs instead of, instead of an elevator, parking at the end of the parking lot to walk further, and hand mowing the lawn or raking leaves. Um, let's see, strength training. Strength training may include resistance band, TRX bands, free weights, or weight machines. It's very important to use good form when lifting weights in order to prevent injuries. This can be done with the help of a personal trainer or someone who specializes in activity. 10-15 to 15 minute warm-up is recommended before weight training in order to prepare the body for the workout. This can be done by walking, jogging, or using an elliptical. Goal setting. Start out by setting realistic goals for yourself. For example, how many days a week you're going to exercise and what exercises you're going to do. Vary workouts to prevent boredom and dis discontinue exercise. Always have a secondary plan if your original plan fails. Keep an extra pair of walking shoes and exercise clothes in the car so they are not excuses of why you aren't exercising. That's good. Um... I'm not going to go through the before surgery checklist because uh, I think we're all kind of going through that together right now with our doctors and with all of our videos. However, I thought this was pretty interesting. Hi items to purchase before surgery. So it does go through what you should have on hand when you get home. Protein powder or a supplement. Canned tuna, salmon, chicken, or ham. Evaporated skim milk, soy milk, rice milk, or lactose if lactose intolerant. Skim or 1% milk. Light fat-free yogurt, no fruits, nuts, or seeds. Plain Greek yogurt, no sugar-added carnation instant breakfast. Vitamins and minerals, a chewable multivitamin, multivitamin B12 sublingual if you need, chewable calcium citrate tablets, vitamin D tablets, and lactate drops. Um, sugar-free popsicles, sugar-free powder drink mixes, sugar-free gelatins, flavored water, non-carbonated. Um, blender or mini chop food processor come in handy. A hand blender, containers for storage for two to four ounces. Child size utensils, um, and or plates, forks, sippy cups, measuring cups, and or food. 
Hi you guys, so I just finished going through my nutritional guidelines book and I hope that you enjoyed all of the information. I'm so sorry that I was talking extremely fast, but there was a lot of information to get through and you can see that it was already over a 20 minute video. So I'm sorry if you don't want to sit through the entire thing, you are more than welcome to skip to whatever you would like. Um, I explained in the video um, that I was going to go through the soft and regular food phases later on. That is one to help save time because not everybody is at both stages right now. Um, and so I just figured I would make two different videos. So that will be coming in probably a couple months, maybe a month and a half uh, when I get closer to those phases. So that is it. Um, I'm just hanging out. Not doing much today, I don't think. Um, I just chose to get completely, ridiculously, way too much makeup on today just to hang out at home. I'm okay with that. Um, I'm not mad. I am going through the audio and visuals for the next video, which is just going to be my consultation. I, th I think that you guys are just going to get, I mean, I know you guys are just going to be getting a, an audio there is no visual. Um, when I put my phone down, it actually just started pointing straight up at the ceiling. So you guys get to see the light in the doctor's office. And that's all you're going to see. Um, and the rest is just an audio. So let me know if you still want to see that. Um, again, it's just an audio of what my appointment was with my surgeon. Like, I'll literally show you guys right now. Um, this is literally... That is the visual you're going to get throughout the entire video. You can see the curtain there that usually goes and closes, and that's the light. <laughs> and that's all that is going to be. So let me know if you guys are um, still interested in hearing that video. I'll just say hearing because there's really not much to see. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys are still interested, and I will post that later on this week. I hope you enjoyed this informational video. I hope you got a lot of information out of it. A lot of the times I will, I had just said, you know, screen grab if you want this. I did not mean to rush through or skip over anything, but there was just a lot of information to get through. So honestly, I, I, I could not have sat and gone through everything. There just isn't enough time. So that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching if you are still watching this. There's so much, so much. It's over 20 minutes. So if you're still watching it, thank you. And I'll see you next time.